This video is going to be about um, measuring a shape in the machine. This shape here that is very difficult to mic with standard micrometers. You could make a special measuring instrument, I guess, to measure it. And I drew this little model up in the computer and, and we programmed some probing cycles to demonstrate how this is done with the Renishaw Pro. Let's look at what we're trying to do here in this cycle on the machine. I'm going to draw I'm I'm going to draw a picture of the part here or the profile we're machining. Part really doesn't matter. And then we're going to leave we're going to tell it to leave stock all the way around this by increasing the radius of the end mill five thousandths of an inch here because we're using cutter compensation that'll stand off the contour by five thousandths of an inch now when when uh, when it measures the first corner on this side the measuring cycle it, it uh, calculates this angle and it also calculates what will be the on the first cut this corner from our our zero point if you will in the program and then uh, it, it measures so in our program we're gonna need this angle here we're not gonna use both sides you could do that and average them out I guess and and you would come out with a little bit more precise probing cycle but it's so small amount and this is symmetrical I made the part symmetrical so it really won't make that much a difference so we have this angle here and in in our um program that's that's variable number 142 is the angle and we're going to divide that by two because we're going to need to know that angle and then it measures the other corner and it comes out with this width here of the actual part that's been machined and in the in the feature to feature cycle which is a non-movement cycle in the Renishaw probing cycles I've given it the actual target width which which of course will be right here and on uh, in variable number uh, 142 or no 140 number 140 it it uh it gives me the the error between the two dimensions and in our program in the machine we're going to divide that by two and so we're going to get this this width right here so let's let's blow this corner up much bigger here like this so right we have a triangle in this corner right here which is this triangle over here and we, we've already m measured and, and calculated the width of that triangle on that side. And we've taken this angle and divided it by two. So that's the angle in the corner here. So we, if we take the tangent of that angle times that width, it'll give us this distance here, which we actually stood off the part. And we need to adjust our radius of our end mill to compensate for that path and take another cut down here and then reprobe it. So that's what we're doing in the program. So let's go look in the program and see how we actually accomplish that. Here's the program that's in the machine and what we ran in this video. I changed, we used tool 8 here in a previous video but I changed it from a half inch end mill to a 5 eighths end mill. And right here, this is the uh, the variable number on that's in my control. Adjust the offset I used for the radius of this tool, and we're going to add five thousandths of an inch to the radius to leave five thousand stock around the whole profile. Okay, and here's the the program that cuts the profile. We're just taking one cut around here. And the numbers to look at here really are the it's it goes 
from x minus one inch to x plus one inch. So we're, we're trying to measure with the probe the two inch width across the top of this um, shape. Okay, so that's, that's pretty simple there. And it just takes a cut. Then it's going to change to the spindle probe here. And we're going to come over and we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to come down to three inches in Z. And then we're going to do a protected move in the Renishaw cycle. And we're going to feed down to one inch at 150 thousandths. And I just do that so I can get a good eye on where the probe is. So I don't have any kind of crash with this probe. And then we're going to go down to minus a 0.25 so we can probe the first corner of the part and it's going to run this cycle here which is the corner measuring cycle in the Renishaw um, probing cycles and what this tells it is is that the the ideal corner of the corner is minus one inch like you saw in the program and 0.9 in Y and it's going to take its probing points three quarters of an inch apart separate them three quarters of an inch so that's what the I and J stand for in this cycle okay then we're gonna do a protected move up to one inch again and then we're gonna set variable 100 to equal well, this variable 142 is the output of this corner measuring cycle here that gives the angle and in this case the angle is a minus angle so we want to change it to a positive number so we're going to multiply it times minus one and that that'll change it to a positive angle so we can do our calculation with a positive number that's all that's doing and it's setting variable 100 to that number that the output came from now G65 P9834 is a Renishaw's feature to feature measuring cycle and it makes no movement when it does this cycle it just outputs the data from the first corner measurement cycle here in some variables what this cycle does is it outputs the the first you have to take you have to make two measuring um, cycles like whatever they are in this case we're doing one corner and then the other corner and when you specify this after the first measuring cycle it it puts data into the variables and stores it there of the appropriate variables for this first one and then we we move over to the other side of the part with this protected move and come down to minus quarter inch again and then we measure the other corner here which these two cycles are the same except this one's just one inch over in X instead of minus one inch and it measures this corner and then it comes up to one inch above Z with a protected move and then we specify this 9834 again but in this one we give it the distance the ideal distance our target dimension if you will of X two inches so now it takes all of this data from from the first cycle and the second cycle combines it together in such a way that it it, it puts out data in variables there are different kinds of data the the width the the error the the error between our ideal measurement which is what this pound 140 is and and uh, other data too that we're, we're actually not using all of what it can do in this cycle so this statement here is if the width is already two inches or less it's going to go to um, n sequence number 10 which is going to jump right down to here in the program and change the tool to an empty spindle but if it's not, then it's going to go to the next line and start executing these lines. Now, pound 101, we're going to set it at the error between the actual measurement and the 2 inches. And we're going to divide that by 2. Because we need that number to calculate our triangle, as you previously saw. Then 
we're going to um, take the angle measurement that we got. We we measure it up here in the in the program, or we set variable 100 to, and we're going to divide it by two, right here, and set variable 102 at that half that angle. Then we're going to take the we're going to set the pound 103 at the tangent of that angle. Uh, you know, of, of, of our result, I should say, the half the angle, the tangent of that. And then we're going to do, this is actually a calculation to calculate the length of the adjoining um, side of the triangle, which is taking the... Um, distance which we calculated here and it's going to it's going to multiply it times the tangent of this angle which is this right here and that's going to give us our our um, adjustment amount that we're going to adjust the offset by and then we're going to adjust this offset we're going to take the offset as it exists and we're going to subtract whatever the result of this calculation was and then it's gonna it's gonna come up to the home position in Z and this is my tool change position in this machine this is an optional stop which it would stop if you had the optional button stop button depressed and then it's gonna call tool 8 into the arm and it's gonna go to to um, end sequence number 8 line 8 in the program which is up here and it's going to execute this whole cycle over again and recut it and measure it again and it's going to keep doing that until it can satisfy this if statement and then it's going to go to here and, and end the program so that's the code and the way it's working and uh, now we'll go to the video and actually show it doing it I'm going to set 42 42 is the y-axis. Setting number 42. On this machine you enter 42 here. And we're going to go 50 thousandths down, incremental mode, down in the y-axis. Okay. And we're going to go back to the tool data. And we're going to set Offset 108, 108.312 to start with. It's still three tenths of an a thousand big. It's 
see what it set the um, tool data to. A three one one five. Got it down to 1.9996. It changed like I told it in the end of the program to the empty spindle. Let's see what we actually measure what we actually measure, what we machined here with the probe. I'm gonna stick this one, two, three block up here so we can measure our pins in the corners here. And then we're going to clamp it, clamp here, make sure we have it down on there tight. Let's stick the quarter inch dowel pins. I'll show you a drawing on the computer with, that shows the dimension over this. I'm going to hold, it, hold the pins up with the magnets here so that uh, I don't have to fumble around and, and try to hold pins and the mics at the same time. So, okay, like that. There's our two quarter inch dowel pins. Let's see what we come up with on the size here. bit difficult to get this in here. Okay. Try that one more time. You can see that dimension there. The camera. Here's the machine part with the, the one, two, three block on top and these dowel pins here which I set the diameters of them at, at 0 0.2502 which is what they miked and this is the this is the dimension the ideal dimension across the pins what it would be when I mic it 